okay, people who run ball clubs, they, they think in terms of buying players. Your goal shouldn't be to buy players. Your goal should be to buy wins. And in order to buy wins, you need to buy runs. Using the stats the way we read them, we'll find value in players that nobody else can see. People are overlooked for a variety of biased reasons and, and perceived flaws. Age, appearance, personality. Moneyball. The statistical model that changed the world of sports. But what is actually Moneyball? Let's listen to the explanation of the guys from T4 Football channel and a link for their full video is in the description below. Moneyball has become a shorthand term for the use of data in sport, but it is not simply that. It is about finding what is undervalued and then using that to determine players who cost less than they should. Used correctly, this simple insight has had incredible ramifications in baseball and is already changing the way that football clubs recruit. The term comes from Michael Lewis's book about Billy Bean. Bean had everything as a player, what scouts call the five tools, running, throwing, fielding, hitting, and hitting with power. When he failed as a player, he vowed never to think about baseball in the same way. Lewis's book charts how Bean, by then general manager at the poor, unfashionable Oakland A's, used data to determine player recruitment and achieved remarkable success on a modest budget. Bean, following Bill James, the father of using baseball stats intelligently, realised that on-base percentage, how often a player gets on base, was more important than pure hitting or glory plays like bunts or stealing bases. Bean started to look for players who had been discarded but had great on-base percentage and were therefore undervalued. Baseball didn't take on-base percentage seriously but Bean did, and he started winning for peanuts. What are the reflections of Moneyball in volleyball? Let's see some examples. Until 2015, the name of Tine Urnaut has been barely heard in the volleyball world. He was playing for small or average clubs like Latina or Vibo Valentia. He was 27 years of age at the time. Then Radostin Stoichev, the head coach of Trentino Volley, and his staff noticed something everyone else didn't do. When joining Trentino, Unaut said, Any player likes to spike, but I do not dislike even the skills of the second line. Later he proved in practice that he is a great all-around player. In season 2017-18 his stats were pretty amazing. Among all players in the league he was first in side out percentage after his reception, second in least reception errors from all outside hitters, fourth in least attack errors from all outside hitters and opposites, sixth in least errors when serving hard, eighth in reception efficiency from all outside hitters, eighth in attack efficiency from all outside hitters and opposites. A player who does not deserve to be undervalued. In 2009, the head coach of the Bulgarian national team, Silvano Prandi, saw against something that everyone else didn't. The Bulgarian volleyball community was shocked when he called up in the team the 23 years old middle blocker of Chernomore, Viktor Yosifov, unknown player on high level back in time. Only several months later, he became the best middle blocker in European Championship 2009. Today, Yosifov is the captain of the Bulgarian national team. It's not without reason that the nickname of Silvano Prandi is the Professor. What are your further suggestions for undervalued players that do not receive the attention they deserve? Comment in the section below and do not forget to subscribe.